all on camera. In early August, we made our way out to the remarkable ski field, which was still thriving off the good conditions brought about during July. Although this was slowly declining in quality, we hadn't at this stage realized that it would be our last decent snow day in Queenstown for the whole month. Recovering from an undiagnosed shoulder injury, I watched on as the others took the opportunity to try out their skills on some of the jumps. All right, Ellie, 180. 180. One, Ellie. After a solid day on the slopes, a great place to chill out and recover is the Sherwood Hotel. Alright Ellie, hit it hard! Yeah! With ping pong, a sauna, often live music or events, and not to mention great food and drinks, it makes a pretty solid apriski if you're looking for something low key. Alright, welcome to Mudfest 2020. You ready for tough mud Ellie? I'm hungry. You're hungry? Yep. This is the end of skiing as we know it. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> what do you boys think of today? <laughs> it's the best activity at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so when the snow is crappy at uh, Coronet Peak, this is what is on the menu. Beer, beer or more beer. Oh, or, um... oh Powerade for him. For more energy. He likes sugar. <laughs> With a premature warming, spring seemed to come early, cutting our ski season somewhat short with slopes turning into mud and ice. A new option in town which will hopefully stick around long term is the ability to have drinks and snacks on the historical steamship, the TSS Urnslaw. In August, they allowed guests to visit their temporary pop-up bar on board each Friday from 6pm with live music as well. The TSS Urnslaw was commissioned in 1912 and is the last remaining coal-fired passenger steamship in the Southern Hemisphere. You can experience this piece of history on its daily voyages across Lake Wakatipu to Walter Peak Farm. Queenstown back in the day. How amazing would it be? Transporting sheets. Yeah. Cheers, man. So we just had drinks on the old TSS Urnslaw, coal powered steamship from 1912. Uh, Pretty awesome. After a series of unseasonably warm days, we decided to head out for a nearby day hike. So we're about to start the uh, Devil's Creek Mount Dua Loop. It's about a six hour hike. Uh, sort of goes up around near the Coronet Peak Ski Resort. Got about a thousand meters of elevation today. It's a nice warm day for winter, so it's a perfect day to get out and explore the area. Yeah. 
The Devil's Creek Trailhead can be accessed via the ski road leading up to the Coronet Peak Ski Resort. Got this man patiently waiting for all these short-legged people to catch up. <laughs> there are many options you can take with this trail as it connects to Moak Lake via the Moonlight Track or explore further down into Skipper's Canyon. The option we took connected up to the Mount Dewar Summit Trail, which is about a five or six hour loop depending on your speed and ability. I'm gonna film this whole conversation, Miranda. What? <laughs> Nothing. Um... Along the way we came across herds of wild mountain goats, which were unfortunately considered a pest in the area, being introduced by European settlers in the 1800s. They caused damage and erosion to the fragile soils, feasting on native plants and grasses, which caused competition to the native species. All right, this one's gonna be in slow motion. Whoa. You gotta do it. You gotta do a um, front flip. You gotta flip. do a run and jump. Beautiful. All right, Marcel. This is where you show off your skill. Look at that. So eventually, that will be our goal. Can't do a, a beach forest below. So we are about to sort of make our trail up towards Mount Dua. Down below here you can see the shot over river that leads down through Arthur's Point down to the Karara River. Down there we have the moonlight track and this way over here where we'll see very shortly is the uh, Skipper's Canyon, so the start of the shot over river. Bad spot, Francesco. How's it, honey? After a brief lunch break nestled in the Golden Tussock with magnificent views, we made our way up to Mount Dua. I've always wanted to live in a landscape that inspires me. My whole life I've sort of dreamt of being in these far off distant places that were just incomprehensible from my sort of smaller beginnings and you know, came out to Queenstown about 12 years ago for the first time and saw how magical this landscape was and when Miranda and I decided to move from Germany two years ago, or almost two years ago. This was a place that I first suggested, you know, 
absolutely spectacular landscape and not just inspiring to get out and motivate yourself and do some active things but also you know in a creative way you know sparks that imagination what's behind every valley and behind every hill it's really cool I would rate this trail as an easy to moderate hike depending on your experience level. The tracks seem fairly overgrown at this time of the year, but easily recognisable with no steep areas and fairly steady switchbacks on the incline up to the peak. Okay, so there is that goal right up there. This is Mount Dua. Too much further to go. Exactly like him. Oh. <laughs> Give us a good slide. Normally I wouldn't recommend this as a winter hike, but due to the warm days, what would be a completely snow-covered hike this time of year was reduced to patches of snow and frost only in the shadows and at the top. So although it doesn't seem like it, we are in the middle of winter. Pretty sure it reached up to like 10 degrees Celsius today. Up here maybe a little cooler. You can see all this ice is just starting to, this ice and snow is starting to melt away. Hence why we're not uh, skiing or snowboarding today, which is not what we'd normally do on our days off during the winter. But we're very, very close now to actually one of the ski resorts in Queenstown called Coronet Peak. So if you look around here, you can kind of see why we decided not to go up there today. 2020 has been declared the warmest winter on record in New Zealand, which is becoming part of a clearly unfortunate pattern. we've done before. For example, Van Lomond, Mount Crichton. It's part of the moonlight track that goes down this valley right down here. You can see them up there. It's uh, Ben Lomond right over there. Lake Wakatipu. Miranda. The vista from the top was absolutely magnificent, especially taking in the adjacent Coronet Peak ski field. Look at that 
I checked. After doing loads of day hikes from Queenstown, I would highly recommend this trip for its epic scenery, easy access, and the fact that it can be done as a loop. So we are at the start of Skipper's Canyon, which we did a few months ago on our bikes. You can check out that video. Francesco is a cow. <laughs> I still am not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> he could in fact be a cow. Yeah, I think this is also for cycling as well. There's some great cycling up around Coronet Peak in the summer. With the unfortunate re-emergence of COVID in New Zealand, Auckland was placed into lockdown, leaving the streets and bars of this tourist hub empty. Yeah, nah, it's great song. Nah, this is cool. Hey. Hey. It's back, baby. COVID's back. New safety and tracking regulations were introduced to help control the spread. Do you want to explain the situation, the, the sign -in? Every show you go, you have to sign up. We have an application, I'll show you quickly. It's giving us the rundown. So you get to any place and you have to scan, record a visit. So you scan this so they say that you are in the place. And then some place they also ask you to write your address. Which there's no point one other. There you go, you got it. <laughs> So funny. Yeah. Unfortunately for Queenstown, which relies heavily on tourism for income, work had come to a standstill. Not a bad opportunity to get a bit silly while we wait for work to return. I'm filming it, it's all good. She's a dentist. She's a dentist. Dude, this is fucking terrible. Dude, hey! Oh, you should not have a bullet. Ow. Ow. Your mother's very disappointed. That's okay. You just destroyed everything. You could. Dude, I don't know how you do that. I don't know what oh, he's fuck up. He's putting cork in your wine. Oh man. I oh, fuck off. I think you made it worse. I think so. No, you can push it down. It's gonna go. There, there you go. In. <laughs> it's gonna go in completely. <laughs> it's called okay. corking the wine. Oh man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The cork is inside. With half a day to spare, we took the opportunity to take a smaller hike off our ever-expanding list. 
So we're up here right now at the summit of the Crown Range, which is actually New Zealand's highest sealed road. The pass goes over about 1,076 metres, which actually connects Queenstown and Wanaka. Now, William Reese was the first person to actually make it across the top of this pass in 1860, and then the road was formed to actually pass right through down into Wanaka itself. Really, really beautiful view down below into the Gibson Valley, which is part of the central Otago wine region, one of the southernmost wine regions on Earth. And they grow Pinot Noir wine down there. It's absolutely beautiful. All right, Chicky, where are we heading? It's just one hour. Maybe we'll go a little further. We've got a little bit of a posse with us today. Rock Peak is a small two-hour return hike in the Pisa Conservation Area. It can be easily accessed from the Crown Range Scenic Road at the Crown Range Summit Saddle. It's all up, up, up. Isn't that right, Chicky? Up, 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 and then... The hike itself has quite a low effort to reward ratio, being such a short walk with breathtaking views of Queenstown, the Gibston Valley and the Crown Range, including the Cadrona Ski Field. The trail is quite well maintained, with steadily climbing switchbacks. The biggest challenge for our day was the strong wind, which isn't that unusual for the area. First moment with no wind on this whole hike. So we're just enjoying this like minute of peace. It's kind of creepy, right? It looks like an old volcano. Um, actually it does. It's important for the snow. <laughs> well, maybe even like some volcano or something. Yeah, maybe. The rock peak itself stands out quite clearly, with communication towers on its peak. So we've got the uh, Gibson Valley here below. You can see the Mount Rosa Trail up there, which we uh, completed in May, I believe. Down below you have that bright blue turquoise river, so there's the Kawarau. It's uh, heading down through the gorge makes its way all the way down to Cromwell, to Lake Dunstan. This is Rocky Peak up here. Love is the one thing we're capable of perceiving that transcends dimensions of time and space. The trail can be continued on to Toy Saddle, to the Meg Hut, or to Cadrona in approximately six hours, which we would have done with more time and better weather. Just another one to add to the list. So we're 
was supposed to have 12 centimeters of snow over the last two days. I think we got 12 centimeters of rain, isn't that right, Ellie? What do you think? Fuck top. <laughs> That's fuck top. With ski conditions being what they were in August, there was only one thing to do. You can finish the video here if you don't want to see drunken people riding mechanical bulls or singing off-key karaoke. Charging sir. Yes! Good one! Three, six, six, three. You're in charge. Yeah, well, no, no, you gotta work out how to do it first. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more global travel stories, except less global and more New Zealand in 2020. Oh, oh, yeah. You've done this before. We got a cowboy here. All right, man. You come from a land down under? Not really. Bye, Francesco. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're the off. You'll be thirty one seconds.
every moment spared